Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today is June 9th, 2020. And uh, as always, this uh, channel sponsor is camerastore.com, shipping all the way from Finland to all around the world. Uh, Europe in like 24 hours and the rest of the world in around two days, sometimes three days, depending when you order. And they already have around over 8,000 items um, available. So in this week's news, First of all, we have uh, MK, I mean, sorry, MS Optics with a new lens, and it's the Aporia, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Aporia, 24 millimeters f2. Um, MS Optics is famous for making some of the smallest profile lenses out there for like a M mount. This is an M mount lens, just in case I hadn't said that. Uh, and it basically looks like the lens cap of uh, like a M body so if you want to get a 24 millimeters and you want an f2 with maybe a little different character or rendition i highly suggest you check it out and these lenses usually uh once they sell out they usually rarely come back so if you that's something you're interested in something very small profile uh that you want to put on your Leica m and just go shoot around a 24 millimeter must be a really fun uh focal length to shoot then in a bit of uh, sad news. Uh, Elsa Dorfman, the photographer, American photographer, has died at 83 years old. She was very well known for being a uh, camera operator and photographer for uh, one of the Polaroid 20 by 24 inches camera. Um, and basically, there's a documentary on Netflix, which I highly recommend you go watch. It talks all about her and the camera, and it's amazing. And she looked like a really nice woman. And I'm very sorry to hear her, you know, passing away. But at least, you know, we have her photography and her that documentary to remember her. Then, um, Safe Flight Berlin has launched their own line of uh, cinematography film. And it's not really cinematography film. And it's very similar to basically what Cinestill is doing with the 800T. So they've called it Spatlight 800T. And uh, it's come because of the lack of stock that Cinestill is uh, having right now. And, you know, Cinestill, every time they make a batch, it sells out like in hours. So Safe Light decided to take uh, action and they've made their own cinematography film. It's Vision 3 film, if I'm not wrong, which is 500T, tungsten balanced. And they removed the Remjet so it's safe to develop at normal labs or your own C41 kit. And so far, it's only coming in batches of 50 to 100 rolls a week and only in 35 millimeter films. So if you feel like trying to get some, this is based in Berlin. They do have an online store, but I'm not sure if you can actually buy it when it's in stock there. I'll leave the link below. It's out of stock at the moment, but it's still a very interesting approach. And uh, hopefully, you know, we'll have more players doing this kind of stuff because Cine still is a great brand and a great film, but it happens to be that it's so popular then there's not enough for everyone. So maybe we can see a couple more people doing similar things and we can see more films like that in the market. Then, talking about special film. Uh, 11 by 14, my favorite format. Um, Keith Canham is once again trying to get people to uh, do a group buy for 11 by 14 Tri-X. So Kodak's 400 speed film, actually in large format, I wonder if it's the 320 because it is in 4 by 5 and 8 by 10. Well, Tri-X in sheet film. So if you're an 11 by 14 shooter, it's coming in boxes of 10 prices uh, given by Keith through email. He doesn't like posting it online, but it's pretty much in the line of 8 by 10, you know, and 11 by 14 being like twice the size. So you can make your own math. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully uh, it comes through and people can buy their 11 by 14 film uh, Tri-X with him. Then Intrepid. Intrepid finally has launched or has announced that it's launching their 5x7 camera uh, in July 1st. So July 1st is landing on the website and you can purchase a 5x7 camera from Intrepid. I wonder if the British say 7x5 because it's 10 by 8 I don't know. Um, but yeah, 5x7 wooden camera by Intrepid, July 1st. Then Dora Goodman is also announcing that she's working and will be launching if she hasn't launched already the Scura 6x6. So basically a medium format pinhole camera with a shutter. I think it has a little shutter uh, for you to 3D print or order from her. So if you're into pinholes and that kind of stuff, you can go check it out. 
Then one of our viewer subscribers, Roger, has set me a do-it-yourself shutter timer. So if you're into making a shutter timer, and I've mentioned a couple in the past few weeks, and you're good with your hands, which I'm good with my hands if I'm doing wood, but not with electronics, you can build your own shutter. He even has a little video demonstrating how it works, and I have to say it looks like a pretty cool device. And then we have Kodak uh, issues, and I'm going to air quote it. Um, Andre D. Wagner, an American photographer that actually is really good, and I highly recommend you go follow him on Instagram or Twitter, wherever you want to see his work or his website. He sells prints, darkroom prints, real handmade prints made by him in his New York apartment. Um, has had some issues with, with Kodak Tri-X having a couple frames that every now and then have black streaks on the images. And he push, published it on Twitter and Kodak actually told them that they were working on it. So it must be a known issue. So if you've had that happen to you, then it's not so much for you to go ahead and claim, which if you want, you can claim. It's more for you to be sure that maybe whatever you thought what you were doing wrong, maybe it wasn't you and it was Kodak having some quality issues. So yeah, they basically interchanged a couple messages on Twitter and I happened to see it. And uh, basically a couple of rolls of Tri-X uh, 400 in 35 millimeter film are having some issues. But hopefully Kodak's working on it, figures out what's going on and it's fixed by the time you watch this and you have no Tri-X affected. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend you go check out Andre. Uh, he has an amazing body of work shooting around the States and also editorial work. So I've been a long time follower. I've even, you know, consulted to buy prints at the moment. I couldn't afford them. So I highly suggest you can go check it out. And his prints, as I said, are handmade by him in a dark room. So yeah, guys, that's the news for this week. Uh, I did publish a video, uh, I think it was Sunday, with a pushing film, uh, another fellow YouTuber all the way from Australia, and uh, you can watch it. It's a new series I started. I wanted to do it in person, but due to what's happening, I can't really travel and do this, so I'm gonna start online, and it's called Film Tubers, and this is basically covering film YouTube channels, and it's not so much about how big you are or where you are, it's more about just connecting between uh, people making this kind of content on YouTube and talking a bit about YouTube, about photography, about their personal work and personal stuff, and where they want to go and where they've been and all that. So it's not so much as a podcast and maybe I won't ask so much photography stuff. It's more like an exchange of ideas and things. So if you're interested, you can go check it out. I'll leave the link below, but it was basically my previous video to this one. Um, and hopefully I'll be doing one or so a month of those for people to watch uh, because I really want to connect out there. I've talked to a, quite a lot of other YouTubers that do this. Uh, content and I really like the idea of sharing ideas and becoming you know friends in a way uh, and you know sometimes it comes into real life and you can meet them at their local town or whatever so yeah I'll stop there rambling so yeah guys as always you can send an email to the email below thanks for watching stay safe and see you in the next one